Drivers, to your cars. Hello everybody, welcome back to Daytona. Today we are doing the Gatorade Duels. So, real quick, we're just going to go through the um, starting list here. Uh, before I start talking about who's in what position and whatnot, if you go into the description, you can find out when the green flag is and all the other action if anything happens. Um, I don't know if the timestamps work. I didn't think they worked when I tried clicking on them, but they might. If not, I'll try a comment um, and then just pinning it to the top so you guys can go through the race really quick if you want. So, let's just do it this way for now. So on the pole, we've got Hugo Jimenez. S oops. Second place, we've got Skylar Rocha in the 81. Third place is the 29 of Jacob Britt. Fourth place is the 43 Drivers, of Dawson Montenegro. Let's see. Fifth is the number two of Tim Brangan. Sixth place is Stephen Pollard the third. Seventh place is the 45 of Tim Zimmer. Oops. Eighth place is the 14 of Sahara Rocha. Ninth place is the 18 of Kagan Holshiner. 21 is Robbie Bannister. The 17 starts in 11. That is Alexander Jones. The seven, um, number 7 and 12th place is Tina Livingston. We've got the 25, and I'm going to try not to butcher your name, Felix Boucher. And if I still butchered it, I'm really sorry. Please let me know. We've got the 99, who is in 15th place. That is Alex Zero. Or A Axel Zero, sorry. And in last place, he missed qualifying and he has a provisional this is the 88 of josh hardeman he just signed up this morning so he is now in this race trying to get a good finish to start further up in the daytona 500 so we've got 12 laps the distance there is 15 cars in this race we have another new driver who is in the second dual race so we have 14 in that group 15 in this one and if this race is anything like the shootout, it's going to be pretty wild. We saw, what, two wrecks in the shootout, a huge wreck, and then a wreck coming to the, um, close to the end of the race. Right back here in that second row in that Cheerios car, the 43 Dawson Montenegro, he ended up winning the shootout. And the driver right in front of him, the 81 of Skylar Rocha, almost had the victory. And he was leading the field to the last lap. And then he got passed in the first two turns, and he dropped back, I believe, to about fifth place. Luckily for him, this was a that was a non-point race. This is not a point race. This is just to set the field for the Daytona 500. And here we go. We are under green. Green flag is in the air. Now the 42 of Hugo Jimenez, he did get the pole for the Daytona 500. All he has to do is finish this race and not have a mechanical issue. And then he will start first. Should there be an accident or anything happen to that car where he has damage or he's out of the race, he is going to have to go to a backup car all the way in the back of the field. And that is the same for the six of Simon Zarnado, and he is in the second dual race. So the 42 jumps out in front of these guys. It looks like the 29 has a huge run. 29 is going to go below the 42. 29 Jacob Britt and behind him is the number two of Tim, Br Tim Brangan pushing Jacob to the front Jacob's gonna lead lap one. Oh, Tim Brangan and Hugo Jimenez they just made contact there going through the trioval they tore checked each other no crash no issues though we still are under green I told you it's gonna be a wild race that's just how the other, the shootout race was. These guys and girls at Daytona, they're really wild this week. Now the Daytona 500 is going to be this Sunday, just to wrap Speed Weeks up. I thought it would be a little weird and a little dumb to have Speed Weeks this week and then have the Daytona 500 next week. So Sunday is going to be the 500. Three more days and the big race is going to be underway. Look at the 88 of Josh Hardman coming up through the field. Started last place. He is trying to get a good start in the 500. The 40 or the 25 Felix Boucher. He is now on the bottom, making it three wide for second. 
Meanwhile, the 21 of Robbie Bannister, his shootout race was cut really short, and he is now in the lead. These guys are getting really antsy already. We're not halfway yet. It's a really short race. All they have to do is finish the race. If there's any wrecks or anything, they go to a backup car. We're obviously hoping that nobody has to go to a backup car, but the way they've been racing, that is not going to happen. <laughs> 25, Felix Boucher leads this lap. The 88 of Josh Hardiman, he went from 15th to 2nd in 3 laps. It's not hard to do at Daytona, but still pretty impressive. See the 14 of Sahara Rocha now. She's climbing herself up to 3rd. Let me move that. There you go. You can see the top 10. So now she's in 3rd place. 3 wide from 3rd all the way back. Tim Brannigan, who was up in second place now is in last look at the 88 of Josh Hardiman he was almost like literally pushing the 25 of Felix through the turn oh and the 88 jumps out of line he wants to try to take the lead here at Daytona Felix is gonna lead that lap but he does not have that much uh, help behind him a few cars now are there but he is going to drop back a little bit here, I believe. Now here comes the 14, Sahara Rocha, for the lead. Josh has a little more help on the outside, though. He might be able to hold the lead. We saw in the shootout, the bottom line was the preferred line. And it looks like maybe the top line's coming in, but I don't know if it's going to be that strong. As all of Josh's help, it, well, they're still there, but they're not that organized. Off of turn number four, it looks like it might be Sahara Rocha for the lead. We're almost halfway in this race already. Sahara Rocha first, and now here comes Skylar Rocha in the middle, three wide for second. Hugo Jimenez, he's back up in second as well, while well, battling for second. Sahara Rocha, the 14, now out front. She's going to go up high to block, and that's going to open the door for the 42, I believe. Ooh, can she get down low? No, she stays up high. We're coming to the halfway point now. Hugo Jimenez, the Daytona 500 pole sitter, right back out where he started in first place. Tim Zimmer now, the 45, he comes up to second place. Gonna try to make a pass on Hugo. And here's Tim Brangan again. Tim Brangan going for the lead. Tim Brangan out of turn number two. He's going to clear the 42. He's going to try to clear the 45 now. Jacob Britt and Robbie Bannister right behind him. Those three were up about four laps ago. They were up in the front of the field. Now we got three wide, four wide. Robbie Bannister <laughs> down low below the 29 at Jacob Britt. He's going to bring Keg and Polshiner with him. There's still four wide, the 42, Hugo Jimenez into the wall. Oh, we've got a crash. Second place, everybody involved. Skylar Roach is going to get through it. Tim Brandon going to get through it as well. He's the leader. Oh, my gosh. Hugo Jimenez, I think, made it through without any damage. If he did, that's a great sign for him because he is the pole sitter. Robbie Bannister had some damage. I think a lot of these guys are going to be okay. Ah, uh, the 45 Tim Zimmer looks like he might have to go to a backup car. Jacob Britt was involved. Oh, wow. Oh, is there a little stack up back here? <clears throat> I don't think there was. It looked like there was, but maybe not. Well, we thought it was going to be wild, just like the shootout was. Let's go back and let's watch what happened. There were three wide here. This was on turn two of lap seven. Robbie Bannister make that, made that really aggressive move onto the bottom of the 29 of Jacob Britt. And that made it four wide. Four wide's a little sketchy here. It's really hard to do. We see... Who was that? I think... 42 got into the wall, and then everybody just stacks up. I really think the 45 was the only car that really got damage from that wreck. 
going to go back and we're going to watch in slow motion as the field is under caution. Let's watch from up here on the aerial view. This 42 is under the wall right there. Everybody kind of comes down low. Looks like the 7 of Tina Livingston turned Kagan. That also turned Skyler. It's turned to 21 Robbie Bannister. The 45, Tim Zimmer into the wall. And everybody else gets by without any damage. You saw the 40 or the 21 and the 29, they did spin, but I don't think there was any damage on any of those cars. Take a few looks at this replay just because um, we don't have, oh, we're under caution, so I don't know whoops, how that's going to play out. This might be the end of the race. See the 42, Hugo Jimenez, into the wall. Everybody had to check up. And from there, they just all wrecked into each other, all crashed. 14, Sahara Rocha, she got really lucky. I think she actually might have made some contact here with the 42, Hugo Jimenez. Yeah, she did make a little bit of contact, but the 7, ooh, the 7 is, um, who started that wreck? Let's watch on her view real quick. Let's see, 42 at the wall, she turned him. Skyler almost got turned around as well, and he actually made it through that wreck. A lot of cars making it through that wreck. Let's actually watch from uh, Skyler's point of view because he almost was in that wreck. That was, oops, <laughs> that was really close. Oops, this is okay. Here we go. Fast forwarding. There's four wide. Four wide almost never works here. But you see, look at this. If she wouldn't have turned him, he probably would have hit the forty or the twenty-one or the forty-five. We might end up having another one lap shootout. The 45, Tim Zimmer, he is out of the race. Let's look at the other damaged cars here. I don't really think anyone else had damage. 29, his car looks okay. Same with the 43, the 80, the 21. Looks like his car is okay. He's got a little bit of fender work here. Nothing too bad. 45 of Tim Zimmer, you unfortunately... You're going to have to go to a backup car, but you're gonna be starting last in the 500 because of your um, finish so very unfortunate for the 45 there meanwhile Tim Brannigan in the lead Skyler Rocha he is in second you know real quick let's while we're still under caution I want to go back and look at the 42 <clears throat> I want to look at the 43 or 42 through that wreck. He did hit the wall, but he had a um, I think he had a great save. And the 45s right there. Lucky for him, he saved that car. Did not get any more damage than what he got off of turn four. So that's good for him. So 14 cars are left in this race. I believe the pace cars lights are going to be turned off this time by. And if they are, we will have another one lap shootout. Can Tim Brand can hold the lead and win his dual race. And if the lights do not go out, then... Uh, wait. Yeah, if the lights do not go out this time then the race will end under caution. They'll have about 200 feet to race to the finish line, but that's it. And nobody can pick up any positions. <clears throat> Let's look. We're hoping that they go off. Pace lights go off. We will have another one lap shootout. We had a one lap shootout in the Daytona um, shootout race. And now in the first dual race, we're going to have a one-lap shootout. This is all determining who starts where in the Daytona 500. The 42, if he can get past this next lap under green flag racing, he will start first. As of right now, Tim Brandon starts third in the 500. 
Skylar Rocha starts fifth. Axel Zero starts uh, seventh. Ninth place would be Kagan Polshiner. Eleventh would be Felix Boucher. Thirteenth would be Tina Livingston. Fifteenth would be Sahara Rocha. Seventeenth would be Josh Hardiman, and he was supposed to start 29th, so he is going to be improving his position, it looks like. We will find out a little bit later. Half a lap till green flag. the end of the second dual race we will have the official starting grid for the Daytona 500 posted for you guys pace cars in turn three turn four can Tim Brand can hold off the field for this one lap shootout and win his Gatorade dual race remember the shootout was a special race that you wanted to win if you win this race or the second dual race, that is also a race that you can um, win. And then for the next offline series, you will get one of the first spots to pick a driver before anybody else. Here we go. Green flag in the air. One more lap to go. Tim Brangan in the lead. Skyler Rocha second. We saw in the shootout, Skyler got passed in the first two turns. It doesn't look like he's close enough to Tim to be able to pass him, at least not yet. Felix Boucher now trying to get fourth place from Kagan Polshiner. Right now, they're just single file for the most part. Tim Brangan wants to win this race. He wants to start third place in the 500. Here goes Sky LaRocha. Here comes the 99. Who is going to win? 99 Axel Zero pushing Skyler. Axel Zero now on the bottom line. He is going to try to take the lead. He wants to win the 500. The 81 goes up and kind of nudges the two of Tim Brangan. Tim is not going to win, unfortunately. 42 Hugo Jimenez right there. What if he could get past the 99 and win his dual race, even though he already starts first? Coming to the line, it's going to be three wide. It's going to be Axel Zero. Axel Zero wins his dual race. Great, great finish. Before we look at the official results, that would be the finish for the 500. Or not the 500, for the uh, Gatorade duel number one. And actually, I thought Skyler was going to get second, but it's saying that he got third. They were tied at the line. <clears throat> so your official standing is right there for the uh, Daytona 500 starting lineup. This will be the entire bottom line. Axel Zero, impressive win. He will start third. Tim Zimmer is going to a backup car. Hugo Jimenez, the 42, he made it through this race in one piece. He will be the pole setter. And an unfortunate race for the 29 of Jacob Britt and the 43 of Dawson Montenegro. They both were going to be starting within the top seven. And now they're going to be at the very end of the pack. So, very interesting for them. Josh Hardman starts 19th. Instead of starting 29th, he rallied up to 10th. Tim Brangan, he led the lap, or he led the last lap, and all the way back to 9th. We have not been able to, um, or no one's been able to lead the race on the last lap and finish anywhere near the top five. Tim all the way in 9th place. So we, we, we will be back with Gatorade Duel number two. Welcome back, everybody. We are now here with Gatorade Duel number two. We saw a thrilling Gatorade Duel for the first race with a crash halfway through the race, a one-lap shootout. Is there going to be anything different in this race? I don't really know. We only have 14 cars compared to the 15 we had in the last race. 12 laps again is the distance. You see the six here of Simon Zarnato. He is the uh, second place in the Daytona 500 qualifying. So if he finishes this race and does not have an accident or a mechanical failure, he will start second. Everybody else, though, 
will start according where they finish. Remember damaged cars, even if they're damaged and racing, they still have to go to a backup car. Now if they just barely hit the Brothers, wall, that's easy to fix. But if they spin out and hit the wall or something like that, they have to go to a backup car. So, let's go ahead and give you guys the starting lineup. So we've got the 6, Simon Zarnado. He is the pole sitter in this race. We've got the 32 of Brett Taylor starting in second. Third, we've got Sam at Ozkin in the number 12. Hunter Blade in the number 15. We've got the number 97 of Gavin Jones. Oops. Number 24 of Pablo West. We've got the 38 right here of Sean Powell. Number 9 of Rue Zero. We've got the 60 of Colton Harmon. We've got the 48 of Ryan Benjamin. Now Colton um, is not in this for points, first off. Just want to say that he's just doing this for fun, and he's probably going to miss a few races just so he is not in the top, like, 5 or 10 in points. Anyway, we got the 74 of Logan York in 11th place. 12th place, we've got the 40 of Tim Hoffman. We've got... In 13th place, Clint Spielman. And in the 16 car here, he just signed up with us as well today. This is CJ Williams. So he is making his first start here in the Gatorade duel. He's doing the same thing that Josh Hardeman did. He wants to try to get a better starting position. So, Simon Zernato leads the field down to the green flag here in just a moment. Pace lights are off on the pace car. 12 laps is the distance. What will we see in this race? Will it be more calm than the first race? Or is it going to be even more wild than the first race? Remember the Daytona 500 is this Sunday. Going to post all the Daytona Speed Weeks races uh, this week. The shootout, the duels, and then the 500. So here we go, Simon leads him down to the green flag. Green flag is in the air, the race is underway. 32 of Brett Taylor is outside of him, and look at the 12 of Sam and Ozkin already going down low. Same with Clint Spillman, they want to try to get some positions early on here. Looks like the outside line didn't get that great of a start from like the third or fourth row back. They're not worth, I don't know, it just looks like they were a little unorganized. 12, Sam and Oskin in the lead already. Here comes the number 9 of Bruise Zero. Trying to take the lead away. Already 3 wide for second. And now 3 wide, just about for first. Looks like the 12th and the 6th were leaning on each other through that turn. I think we're going to have another wild race here. So off the first turn, or off the 4th turn, who's going to lead the lap? It's going to be the number 9 of Bruise Zero. Simon uh, Simon Zarnado, he is all the way back to fourth after just one lap of racing. Look at this, they're almost already three and four wide. We almost saw four wide. Look at the 38, Sean Hal, he wants the lead. Now the, tw or the yeah, 60 of Colton Harmon. I'm getting all my cars mixed up. I cannot wait for the 500. I'm so excited. <laughs> all right, number nine, Bruiser is still out front. Looks like he might be a pretty strong car in this race. 38, Sean Hal, Sam at Oskin, and the number 12, they're battling side by side. So Bruiser continues to lead here at Daytona. I'm thinking Sean's going to try a move here, try to get the lead. The Bruise Zero machine, he is up top. Look at Colton Harm down below, Sean Hal, he wants the lead here at Daytona. Three wide for the lead. This is going to be anybody's race. I have no idea who could be a favorite to win this thing. The 16, he is right. Well, now he's going. He's going to try to go for the lead. 16, CJ Williams, his first start here. He missed the shootout. He wants to start up near the front for the 500. Here he goes. He's going to try to lead this lap, but I think it's going to be Colton leading this lap. It is. Looks like the 16 might be able to get the lead here in turn one, though. We still we haven't seen the high side 
really be competitive. Sean's been able to hang up there in the middle line. He's been about third place for the last few laps. He wants to get up to the front. He wants to lead this thing. Now Logan York on the inside line there for second place. 74, he did not really... He had a really bad shootout race. Ended up being in that first crash, and then he was kind of the cause of the second crash. His car was really slow and blocked the entire field, and then they wrecked behind him. So he's looking for a little bit of redemption. Here comes Logan. He's going to lead the lap. And now the 48 Ryan Benjamin, or is that, yeah, Ryan Benjamin, he is going to try to take the lead away now. We're almost halfway through this race. Tim Hoffman in that 40, Brett Taylor in the 32, Simon Zarnato, the 6, and the 15, 100 blade, they are all on the bottom lane. That 97 to Gavin Jones, looks like he's just going to um, stay in the back for now. He saw how that first race played out, and I don't think he wants to be up near the front, at least not yet. Three wide. Here comes Tim Hoffman now for the lead. This lead changes so many times in a lap. It's hard to keep track of it sometimes. Tim Hoffman now for the lead. He is going to lead this lap. Now look at the 32 of Brett Taylor. He's getting pushed by Simon Zarnato. And Hunter Blade looks like he might try to make it four wide. Oh no, he goes back in line. That was probably a smart decision. This has been a pretty wild race, but... We haven't seen any four wide racing yet, and that's probably a good thing. Tim Hoffman now trying to fight back on the outside line. 32, Brett Taylor in the lead. He's battling with a 40 of Tim Hoffman. Hoffman has the advantage so far. Here comes the number six of Simon Zarnato. Ooh, they're getting really close, really tight racing here. Simon going to take the lead back. He wants to win this thing. Gavin Jones now in that third car on the bottom. Ooh, Gavin's going to make it four wide for second place. Is this going to work? Ooh, jeez. It might work, but now everybody else is going to try to come with him. And now the 32, the 38, the 40, and the 12, they're all four wide for second or third place. Ooh, we saw last race. This is how the big one started. Well, that's how the wreck happened, at least. It wasn't really a big one. Gavin Jones out front now. Four wide still in the back here. Now the six, Simon Zarnato. He gets pushed up to the top. Oh, and they're going to make it, I think. Oh, wow. Colton Harmon. I don't know what happened there. Looks like he got hit by somebody. He might lose the draft. Three wide for the lead. Are they still? They're still four wide. Still four wide for a brief second. Hunter Blade and now Pablo West going down low trying to make it four wide. And Colton's going to lose the draft, unfortunately, but that's what happens in super speedway racing. Either that or else he sees that there's going to be a wreck and now he's going backwards. Well, the four wide dissipates for now. I have a feeling we're going to see four wide again. Here it is, of course. The 1500 blade up top. Ooh, are they going to make it through? Yep, they make it through somehow. This race is getting really wild. Meanwhile, the 12, the same at Oskin, is the leader. Just barely over Gavin Jones. We've got four more laps to go. These guys are all over the place. Here comes the 48, Ryan Benjamin. He wants the lead. Looks like that number 97 of Gavin Jones. He has a pretty strong car on the outside. The number 60 of Colton Harmon, he does catch the field. Oh, we got four wide again back here. We're going to go back there and we're going to watch them. I think they can get through it, though. It's not... Oh, the 24 into the wall. 24 is in the wall. He might lose the pack now. Something happened with the 8 car of Clint Spillman. I didn't see that. We're going to have to go back and watch that. I don't know if that was a crash. I mean, he has damage on the back of his car. If that was a crash, the caution didn't come out. I didn't even see him wreck. So Clint Spillman. Yeah, he's got a little bit of damage. I don't know if maybe that was that little dust up with Colton. Colton. 
24, Pablo West does rejoin this pack now. Unfortunately, Clint Spillman is all the way in the back, and I don't know. We're going to have to go back, and it does look like there was a crash. I see the skid marks now. I'm really sorry about that, Clint. I should have thrown the caution. I didn't realize it was a caution. So, I will look a little bit harder on the 500. I'll make sure that um, I see all the cars and make sure they're all accounted for. I had no idea you wrecked. Meanwhile, up front, we've got the 16 of C.J. Williams. He wants to try to get the win here. We've got two to go, by the way. Let's see. The 8 car is one lap down. So, yeah, he did come down pit road and got some repairs to his car. Look at the 74, Logan York. The 60 of Colton Harmon. And the 16 of C.J. Williams is now on the outside. He might fall back a little bit. We've got some three and four wide racing back here yet again. Are they going to be able to make it back to the line? One lap to go. Oh, the 97. Gavin Jones almost hit the 12. There's still four wide back here. Incredible racing. Colton Harmon, the leader. Now look at the 40 of Tim Hoffman. Tim is going to try to get the lead here in the last lap. We've seen so many last lap passes here. Oh, they're crashing! The 6 is around, the 97. I don't think that was a huge crash. Oh, they're still wrecking the 6 hard into the wall. Who is it going to be coming down to the last lap? It looks like it's going to be Colton, the number 60. Now, I just put a car in here for fun. So I am going to just go to the back. I'll start last place, or at least last in this um, line of cars. And I'm going to give them win technically to the 40 of Tim Hoffman uh, I don't think it's fair that I get a win at one of these special races so my gosh a crazy finish crazy last lap and unfortunately the six of Simon Zarnado you are gonna have to go to a backup car that is heavy damage on the last lap can you believe that real quick before we look at the replay here is the final results for the uh, second Gatorade duel we thought it was going to be pretty wild, and that definitely was wild. So, Colton Harmon wins the race, but like I said, I'm going to forfeit and go to the back of the pack. So the 40, Tim Hoffman, 74, Logan York, you get some redemption there. Hunter Blade, the 15, 24, Pablo West, 38, Sean Howe. All six of those cars were able to make it past the wreck. 16 of CJ Williams, I think you might have got some damage, but you might be alright. Brew Zero, 8th place, 9th place, Sam at Oskin. 10th place, Gavin Jones, 11th, Brett Taylor, 12th, Ryan Benjamin, 13th, Simon Zarnado, heavy damage to that car, and 14th, Clint Spillman. So real quick, I actually want to go back and look at Clint. Something happened with his car, I don't know what. We're just going to fast forward here. I think it, I don't know what happened exactly, I think, oh, that was Colton spun him out. Wow. Colton spun Clint out, and not too bad of damage. But yeah, that's exactly what happened. That's when Colton lost the draft. I didn't realize that that had happened. So, that is totally my fault. I'm sorry about that, Clint. But chances are you might have been involved in this wreck, or you might have been able to get past it. So, I think a couple cars are going to be going to a backup car here. It looks like, who spun who out? The 12, Sam and Oskin got down into Gavin. The 16 up into the wall. A lot of cars into the wall here. And then the 6 goes down low. They almost collected the 38. And then right here, hard, hard contact for the 6. Simon Zarnado, he is going to be going to a backup car. The 48 is going to be in a backup car. 32, Brett Taylor is in a backup car as well. I think everybody else made it through with uh, very minimal damage. Uh, the 12 and the 9 did have damage. CJ Williams, did he get damage from that? He does have damage. So yeah, literally the first six cars were able to make it through that wreck. My gosh, I can't believe that. Huge wreck on the last lap here at Daytona. 
it has been a very wild race. Again, Clint Spillman, I'm very sorry. Um, since you didn't have much damage and since I didn't throw the caution out for you, I'm going to put you a little further up in the field because everybody that was in that last lap crash has damage. Um, from the 12th, 12th car on down, they do have some significant damage. Just to double check, I do want to see this real quick, see how much damage some of these guys got. Let's ride with the 12th of Samet Ozkin. This was four wide. This was not going to work to the line. There was no way. Oh, the 32, Brett Taylor actually started that wreck. Well, the 12 doesn't have much damage. He actually might be alright. The 97 doesn't have damage. Not too much, I don't believe. Just double check here. It's close, but yeah, he doesn't have damage, and neither does the 9. Thirty-two Brett Taylor. Forty-eight Ryan Benjamin does have damage. I think Brett did get damage here, so let's uh, just check this one more time. Actually, no, he didn't really get damage. I mean, he does have a little bit of damage, but like I said before, if cars bump into the wall off the of turn four, they're okay. That's exactly, uh, that looks like what happened to Brett, so let's see, Brett finishes 13th place. Or wait, does he? No. Brett finishes 11th, what am I saying? 13th. So Clint, you are going to basically start where the 48 car is. You're still going to be kind of far back in the field, but that's Daytona. <laughs> Alright guys, Daytona 500 is this Sunday. We look forward to seeing everybody there. We cannot wait for it. That's going to be the first points race. That is also going to be the next special race that you want to win. Remember these dual races, the shootout, the 500, the Indy 500, um, the Coca-Cola 600, the All-Star Race, and Homestead are all races that you want to win. They will let you... or they basically give you a point in picking the car, or picking your next, um, picking the first car for the next series. Man, that's what I'm trying to say. I couldn't say that. So that is what, um, that is what that does if you win one of those races. If you win multiple races, that gives you a higher opportunity to win or to pick a car first. So keep checking back. Gatorade Duel is going to be posted now and the 500 is in three more days on sunday we cannot wait until then we will see you all later